Welcome to Fast Tip Friday. This is Amy Bowser with Litigation Support Guru. For today's Fast Tip, we need three things. Number one, we need a directory that has a list of file names in it. Number two, we need a text file that has the file names the way they are now and the file names the way that we want them to be separated by a pipe. The third thing we need is software called Bulk Rename Utility. This is a free software program. It's mentioned on my site and you can just Google it and it'll come up. Okay, so the scenario here is that uh, I have seen paralegals time and time again um, pull together a list of exhibits and um, they may have the list in Word or Excel but for this um, example we have it in Excel so they might have a list of the file names or the titles of the files and um, a date for each of the files and a bunch of other information in this case I just wanted to focus on the issue at hand which is that sometimes the attorneys want the paralegals to put the files in order by something other than the file name. So I, for instance, I've seen paralegals uh, over and over again, manually, one by one, figure out what order they want the files in, and then add, um, rename the file with a prefix like um, 01 underscore or 001 if there's more than 99 of them. So, and then they manually rename all the files to get them into the order that they want them into. And that could be um, an exhibit number order, it could be a date order, it could be, you know, whatever the reason they want to sort it in a different order is. Um, so <clears throat> in this example, I'm um, working towards the fact that they want them in they want the files sorted in chronologic order by the date that's on the document itself. <clears throat> so in this instance I have a list of the file names and I have the dates that the paralegal has entered into the spreadsheet that correspond with these documents. Now as you can see there this list is in file name order. Um, I could just as easily you know sort it on date if I wanted to. So. <clears throat> In order to get the date in front of the file name, so to rename the file so that the date is in the front of it, so that it looks like this, I, for each of the dates, I used a concatenate formula or function, and I used a text function in order to turn the date into the format that I wanted it to be. So in this example, I took the file name and the date and I concatenated the date and then an underscore and then the file name which is in cell A1. So if you're interested in the concatenate function, um, I wrote a blog post about it so you can search my site for that um, article. Okay, so the formula is the same for each of the files and basically between these two functions in Excel I was able to get the file name to look exactly like I like or that I want it to be eventually. So I'm going to use bulk rename to rename all the files based on my list that I'm going to create and it's going to be a text file. Okay, so I could at this right at this moment right now, I could just save this spreadsheet as a text file. <clears throat> but the problem is that I would have two extra fields in it. These two columns are in my way. I needed them, you know, in order to get the function to create the file name that I want, but I don't need them <clears throat> in my text file. So normally if I'm getting ready to save this as a text file so that I can use it with bulk rename, <clears throat> I would delete these two columns. Um, I wouldn't necessarily have to save the spreadsheet, but I could delete the columns before I do the save and then 
I would only end up with columns A and D in my text file. But because this is a formula, if I remove these columns, like right here, if I hit delete, then all of these values um, change to an error because it was based on what was in column B. So it's easy to fix. So I highlight all of these resulting formulas and I can just copy and then come over here to a different column and paste special and then what I want to do with paste special is choose values so I want to paste the values into this field so now if you look up here I no longer have the calculation I have the real values so now if I remove these columns that I don't need, just temporarily so they're not in my way when I save, I can delete them and then do a file save as to get my text file. So I'm gonna, I need a text file and I eventually need it delimited by pipe, but in the meantime, I'm gonna save it as um, a comma delimited file. Now, the file extension for that is CSV, but I know that I'm about to change it to a pipe. So, in my mind, you should never have a CSV file, which implies that it's comma delimited, if you've changed the delimiters to something else. So, the default for that is text, if you're using some other delimiter. Um, and then I'm just going to call it rename. So, exhibit list rename and then I'm saving it in the same folder over here. Okay, so file extension text, click Save, and it doesn't really matter what you put here because you're done with the Excel spreadsheet for now. So, I can minimize that. So over here we have our, okay, so it gave it a CSV file extension anyway because it's being stubborn. <clears throat> So, I will just fix that. And then, yes. Oh, it's still open in Excel. Close this, don't save. All right. Okay, so now I have my text file, and if I open it, it's comma delimited. <clears throat> and that won't work with bulk rename, so it needs to be a pipe. A pipe is the shift key on top of the backslash, which is on your keyboard above your enter key. So we're going to replace comma. Now there's only one comma in this entire in the entire row, so we should have no problem doing a search and replace. and replacing comma with a pipe. And a pipe looks like that. So replace all, and close that. So now I have a pipe delimited file. On the left is the file the way it is now, and on the right is the way that I want it to be. So we can save this file. Okay, so now we can go to bulk rename. And if we go down to the folder that I'm in over here, here's all the files as they are right now, and here's what the new name will be, but we haven't finished. So we're going to go to File, Import, Rename Pairs, and we're going to import our text file that we just created. Now, if I select the ones that I want to change, so I selected one through eight. This is the new file name. It, it's nice because it gives you a chance to check it before it does it. And you can you can ignore these other files that are in there. Um, you can uh, you can select a subset of the files in the folder. So we're going to click rename. 
It gives you a warning you're about to do it on eight files. You click OK. Click OK. And as you can see, the files have been renamed. And now they're sorted in chronological order. So this is just an example of something I've seen paralegals um, deal with a lot, and they don't know that they can do it in a batch format. Um, but you could just as well replace any. You could rename files any way you want. All you need is a list of the file names as they exist, and then a list of the file names the way you want them, which you can create in Excel, and then export it to a text file, and then change the delimiter. Make sure the delimiter is a pipe, P-I-P-E. Um, and that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this fast tip, and I hope you put it to good use.